all the versions. Okay, here we go. So here's the set we're doing. set there guys is it gonna work out <clears throat> great now the middle tune feral O'Gara it sounds hard I know but half of it is just decoration there's very simple I found on the session.org there's a simple version that's gonna work really really well and anybody that can get all the ornaments all the triplets and stuff like that I'll talk about them and help you get them <clears throat> and so that will work fine don't worry about that don't be scared off by by all the smoke and mirrors there in Feral O'Gara, okay? And then the last two, Judy, yes, what, Judy? What was the third one you played? It's called Toss the Feathers. And it's in E minor. There's two Toss the Featherses. One of them's in D and the other one's in E minor. So we're doing the E minor Toss the Feathers, yeah. And that's the last one. That's the next one I was gonna talk about, which is one, do you do some of you guys already know toss the feathers it's a fairly common Irish tune and I thought that there might be a few people that already play it does anybody already play it yeah okay yeah a couple of people already play it perfect so this is a chance <clears throat> to work on those up bow rolls and get good at that key of E minor a little bit better at that key of E minor and there's a couple of fiddle tricks in there that we're gonna get that will help us help us with tunes down the road okay so I thought that was a great grouping of tunes and I'll tell you about each one of them they are well-known well-played tunes everybody plays Farrell O'Gara everybody plays Toss the Feathers and you guys are going to too all right 
<clears throat> any questions about any of those tunes? Or comments or anything at all? Hi, Dan. Hey, Darren. Uh, the Broken Plans that you're playing is still not the same as the music that you sent out last week. No, I know, but I didn't I send out, I realized, didn't I send, a, send out a session.org version during the rehearsal? Yes, you did. Okay, that's the one we're working from. It's, I know it's a little different, but it's really close, and I'll show you how. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that was the closest I could find on the internet after completely screwing it up on the, uh, on the Sibelius. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments about any of those tunes? So that's going to be uh, that's going to be the Broken Pledge, the uh, Feral O'Gara, and Toss the Feathers. Yes, Bill. I'm just going to ask the Feral O'Gara. Is that Feral? Um, is that F A R R E L or? I think so. I'm just going to look on yeah. the. It's like their name, the regular name. Yep, yeah, it's it's the guy's name. Yep, yeah, it's a it's yeah, a it's okay. a dude. <laughs> I didn't know whether you're saying something in Gaelic or in English. <laughs> <clears throat> no, you can always tell if I'm trying to speak Gaelic because it doesn't sound like Gaelic. <laughs> I'm terrible at Gaelic, my God. Yeah, my dad used to have a joke like we'd be at a folk festival in England and some, some fella would be singing a Gaelic song and they're long. I don't know if you've ever heard any, but they're very, very long. They have a lot of verses. And after about 10 minutes, he'd lean over and say, that's just the title. <laughs> yes, Grant. Oh, um, Dan, just wondering um, uh, the chords oh, on yes. the other two songs. Are you going to be uh, giving us some insight on those? I heard E minor, so we have one chord so far. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I'd be interested to see what you guys think as we're learning them, and then we can put the put together the chords that way. And I can certainly look and see if I can find some versions with chords. But let's see what happens when we're learning the phrases. I'd like to know what you think is supposed to be there. Okay. And also with the broken pledge. So I heard the three versions of the broken pledge while I read one <clears throat> and heard the other two, which was great to hear MP3s. That made things a lot easier. And I'll tell you, I liked them both. Okay, and I like Ray's as well. <clears throat> and uh, it, each of them could work. Uh, there's a couple of, uh, uh, I would say Doreen's version is probably the, the most usable, user-friendly version. Grant is a little bit more fancy, and I like it. But it should also fit right there on top of Doreen's, like, you know what I mean? It could be an expansion of Doreen's, I think. I'm going to take a closer look at it, but let's see if that works for now. Same with you, Ray. Very, very similar. Like, a good good uh, chord choices and uh, good timing. It's just that it's got a couple of fancy things in there, but it should work just fine. You know what I mean? Okay. It's a different key, I think. What's that? Is Ray's a different key? No, it raises the is still the D minor. It's just that he's he was using the uh, you used the music that I tried to write on Sibelius. So I I understand what you had in there and what you had in there looks totally right. It's just that it's on top of my my uh, screwed up version of the of the writing. Yeah, I did it to your uh, your playing, not to the music. Yeah, and I think I I can I, I can see that. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I think it would be fine. Again, you just got a couple of fancy things in there on top of what would be the basics. So, can't see any reason not to do it. Okay. Okay. Great job, guys. Keep the chords coming. I'm not a guitar player, so I kind of... <clears throat> I look at the arpeggios. That's how you get... You guys know that already. That's how you kind of get a sense of the chords. You look at the arpeggios and see what they spell out, you know? and go from there. Sometimes you need to add a note just like you guys did or or play. Do what my buddy Brian does, which is he never plays a third ever when he's recording. It's always fourths and fifths. And that way it doesn't matter if you're major or minor, it still works. And also it lets the melody sit on top. And that's what he always says about those open tunings because he plays in an open tuning. And he plays in a tuning that I've never heard of anywhere in the world. And it is, now you've heard of Dad Gad, right guys? Do you, do any of you guys play in Dad Gad? No, I never tried it. Never tried it? 
<laughs> what is it? It's where the guitar is do tuned D A D G A D. Yep. And it's really popular in Scotland and Ireland these days because it's an open tuning just for that reason. It doesn't matter what key you're in. Brian can play in any key he wants. He just takes his capo. He actually has two of them, sometimes three. <laughs> and he puts it on the neck of his guitar and he plays as if he's in the key of D and it comes out whatever key you need. And the open nature is really nice and complimentary and lets the melody sit on top. See what I mean? Now, Brian doesn't play Dadgad. Dadgad is the most popular open tuning, but Brian plays D-A, D-A, D-A. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, like I said, he's like the only guy I've played with guitar players in Scotland and England, France, Germany, you everywhere, Ireland, Cape Breton, you name it. And I've never met anybody that uses that tuning. And it was very funny when Godrich asked him to do a guitar, a beginner guitar workshop. And he's like, uh, okay, but, uh. It's not really going to translate to the way I play it, you know? <laughs> so anyway, so that's that's what a lot of people do. And uh, I don't know if you've ever tried it, but I'm going to tell you, every guitar player that I've ever met that has started to try out gag da uh, Dad Gad hardly ever go back to regular standard tuning. Now, my brother Paul, he plays in drop D. So that's standard tuning, but the, but the thick E string is down to a D. See that? And again, it's just this open idea, and he's been he's always played that way ever since I can remember. So, anyway, kind of interesting. But those chords all look really, really good. And like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna look at it a little closer. But I'm pretty sure they should fit on top of each other just fine. Okay, and we'll figure out these chords as we go for these new tunes. Okay, all right. Just a bit, bit yep. of trivia that the drop E the E drop to D is standard practice almost. For playing early lute music on the guitar. Well, because there you, you go. The E to a D, it's very similar to the tuning of a lute. Oh, and there you, can you play go. Play lute music as it is almost. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the. It's not unrelated, right? The 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 yeah. lute and the the accompaniment, like it's it's just as old as the fiddle playing, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. Cool. Very cool. All right. Shall we get? Anybody have anything they want to say before we get started with the fiddling? Anything at all? When you go off your diet? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, mostly, mostly. You know, I still, I actually, like I said, I had already made a whole bunch of changes to my eating before, like cut out all the fast food and cut out all the snacks and all that stuff. I've been doing that for years now. But yes, this starvation diet, I did give that up for the interim. And I'm hoping that, you know, I had my consultation in December and the earliest they could get me in was March. So I'm hoping that, you know, it'll be like a good couple of months off so I can kind of get geared up for it again, you know? <laughs> that's the season. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, why don't, we get, uh, why don't we get warmed up? Let's play a nice, uh, let's see. Let's put, let's start with A major tonight there guys. We'll start with A major, okay? And then we'll do a D major. We'll do the extended D scale with the arpeggio. And then we'll we'll work on the Callum Road set. All right? To warm up. I'm going to check my tuning cuz I didn't love my tuning when I was playing those tunes and I didn't check. And these days, these change of season times are just brutal on the fiddle. screen you might be on page two I'm not sure we have two pages here Carl 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 where is Carl oh. 
Hi, Liz. There I am. Oh, there you are, Carl. Okay, hey, nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you got your helmet on and your and your uh, gun oiled. All right. <laughs> Okay, so here's your A there, guys. Nice, reliable A for you to start off with. So get that A ready. We're going to play an A major scale. Ready? And... for everybody I'll tell you on my end I was like I would give myself 97% I did really good there tonight I tuned my fiddle first I think that's why everybody feeling good let's do it again right away one two and here we go Ready? the key of A. Getting in there, getting the fingers stretched. <laughs> okay, so let's try now the D major scale, the extend D. So that's where we start on D. We'll go all the way up to A and all the way down to A. Okay, then D major. <clears throat> Starting on the D. Ready, and... at the end make me feel like you feel good about what you did. I saw many kind of like, whoo, so that looked good. Why don't we just do it again right away, all right? Repetition is how you get better. 
one more time with the D. Ready? And... <laughs> Now let's try the uh, arpeggio for that. So that's going to... Like that. Okay, so we start on the D. Ready? D. Okay, let's do that one more time. Ready, D. And those bottom two notes, the low A and the D, that's like my go-to double stop for the key of D. If I finish something in D, I always go down there. Gives it a nice kind of floor to the, uh, to the sound, okay? So when you do that arpeggio, it's fun to try to play those two notes together. In fact, any of the arpeggio notes can be played together and it's a really good practice. a few times will really strengthen your bowing and your intonation and you know just your playing double stops in general which as you guys know is not easy it's a little bit of a skill all right so shall we practice Callum Road <clears throat> okay Carl you'll be hanging on maybe you might know Car uh, Callum Road I, I know you never know no not one you've done okay <laughs> so you'll be hanging on there by a thread but that's okay I'm sure you're very brave. Okay. So let's uh, let's play the uh, Callum Road twice, and then we'll go into the Homeward Bound, and we'll play that twice, and then we'll go into the uh, Kieran Taurus, and we'll play that twice. And I'm just going to get the music up so that I make sure I play the same version as usual and don't meander, which is what I usually do. Okay, homeward. Okay, so let's give it a try there guys, Callum Road set, nice and easy, one, two, three.
Okay. How'd everybody do there with all that music? Now, from the sense of watching people's bows, I get the idea that, first of all, Callum Road was too slow. So we'll try that, doing that a little tiny bit faster, because I saw people kind of holding themselves back a little, and I felt like it was too slow, too. So we'll definitely do that a little faster. And I got the sense that Homeward Bound is sitting pretty good. Seems pretty consistent across the board there with the confident bows and fingering that I can see. Uh, but the Kieran Taurus seems like it needs more work. It needs more slow work. Would that be correct? Okay, yeah. see? I'm getting really good at Zoom reading. Yes? For any chance to get a better copy of this Karen Turch, I can't read this copy very well. It's throwing me off terribly. Sure. Fun, but it's all mixed like it's, anyways, I find hard to read. Okay, I'll get the other version of Jerry's book here. Oh, don't worry about it tonight. Another time. Oh, okay. okay. You have to remind me, Debbie. Send me an email to remind me because I'm making so many videos and getting so much music that I forget. Falls off the radar. But yes, I can definitely do that. I'll get it out of that other book, the other edition. I think it's a little bit better laid out. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? So, so yeah, Kieran Torish definitely needs more work. So we can go, we'll take that on its own. We'll do it nice and slow. It's in D. We're all good at D right now anyway. And A. Uh, so we might as well work out on, in that key right now. Any other questions or concerns about any of those tunes? Now, Carl, what do you think so far? You got to oh, unmute yourself, and I want to ask you about your fiddle, too. Great. Okay, you liking the tunes? I love it. Oh, excellent. Now, it seems like you had an inlay on the fingerboard of your fiddle. Is that right? Yeah, it does. It's uh, Earl uh, and Abalone. Oh, lovely. I love that. Oh, look at that. Very, this very nice. Copy. I had a copy from a luthier, uh, and she uh, had a book of, uh, of designs, and I didn't like any of them, but I happened to have a bluegrass magazine with me, and Vassar Clements had this on his. <laughs> very nice. But he had the word Vassar, and I, I left that part out. Yeah, right, right. Well, very nice, Carl. Okay, I'm glad you like the tunes, and if you need any help with them, please let me know, okay? Because I know you just Thank got you. it all, so it's a lot of music. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay, so let's take the uh, Kieran Taurus then, guys. And let's go nice and easy with it, all right? Nice and easy. Kieran Taurus. <laughs>
Okay, that was a good workout in that key. Or sorry, on that tune. That was nice and slow. And everybody looked like they were being able to put one finger in front of the other. How did everybody feel about that? Getting more in your head? Now, I realize also, the more we play it, I realize that it's not a familiar sounding tune. Okay? It's not one that uh, I think a lot of you guys hadn't even heard it before. We tried to learn it. And so, and it's one of these tunes, like it's totally cool, but it's not your typical. And so I wonder if it might be good for you guys to check out Jerry Holland's version of it. Okay? I'm going to tell you what record it's on now. What's it called again? Kieran Torish. Okay, thank you. Oh, there. Okay, got it. Okay. And I'm just going to look up and see what record it's on here because... Is it in, Jerry, is it in Jerry's book? It or is. One of the books? It is in Jerry's book. book. That's the, the music you're looking at there is from Jerry's book. And it, let me tell, see, tell you now. What, what color book? It's the yellow. And yeah. it's in page 38. On the, in the yellow book. Yes. Yeah. And that's the better, this is the better edition. So I'm going to snap a picture of this right now. While I remember. Yeah, I'll do it this way. Okay, I got a picture of that now. So I'll send that out later. And now I'm just going to see what record that's on. Okay, 15 I chords. I have a lot of trouble with the bowing in that one because I try to be on a down bow for the cuts and then I end up on the up bow. So it turns me around and I know you put in certain turns that were on an up bow. I, I don't know, yep. I forget where you do the up bow. Now those bars are okay, but sometimes you just like it's not as clear as it looks. Like yes, it is. It is weird bowing. Now, if you look at my, uh, uh, who was asking me that, by the way? Me. Oh, hi, Wendy. Yeah. If yeah. you look at the video, when I did the video, the slow video, I tried really hard to use the bowing that I use. Okay. okay? So you can get a few ideas off of there, but okay. as we practice it, I'll try to explain it as well. Now, so, it's been recorded a lot of times. 15 recordings of this tune. Ha, ha, ha. So, and there, there, there's some really nice ones in here. So, the first one, Brid Harper. She is a wicked Irish fiddle player. I've met her many times. She lives in Ennis, and it's on her record called Brid Harper. Okay. Also, Jerry recorded it on Fiddler's Choice, which is one of his awesome records. He made lots of great records, but... The name of that record is called Fiddler's Choice, okay? I can't remember what year it came out, but it's a, it's a really, really great record. It was well known, and uh, so that's where he plays it. That would be, I would say, the best way to hear this tune and get it in your head. It's also Blazing Fiddles did it. Uh, Jake Sharon and Shane Cook, their record, Head to Head, they do it. It's great. I've heard it, and I've heard them doing it live, too. Gordon Duncan does it, the piper, because it happens to fit on the Highland Pipes on a record called Just for Gordon. And there's also Howie McDonald on the Cayley Trail. And uh, and that's and Altan, the great band, Scottish Irish slash band, uh, they recorded it on their record called The Poison Glen. Okay? So and you can find all that information on the session.org. All you gotta do is do a search for the tune and it tells you all the recordings that it's on but if i were you i would listen to jerry because that's basically where i got it from and on fiddler's choice and just get more familiar with the melody that's all you got to do okay i think it will sink in there now should we try it one more time before we leave it and move on to the irish let's do it i make an executive decision Okay, and I'll read it right out of the book for old time's sake. Look at actual paper. Okay, here we go. Slightly faster there, guys. 
One, two, three, and. confident and we were going faster as well so that's good very very good anybody have any problems that they'd like to talk about or give me give me shit for <laughs> I don't mind I got two kids I get it all the time we anyone have a problem following this road map oh really all the bars I, I, I get lost in a second word yeah, this this second edition here is much better, and I just snapped a picture of it, and I'll I'll email it out there as soon as we're finished because I gotta connect. I got, got just got a new phone, so I gotta connect my phone to my computer, and then I can send out this other edition. If you want to take a screenshot of it, I will hold it up to the screen now. Okay, anybody that wants to take a screenshot of uh, this is much better, much better version. Okay, is that nice and clear? So anybody Not that really. no uh, drag okay. But <laughs> <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> I'll send you what I've got. Okay. Sure. Yeah. What have yeah, you got, Grant? Here. Well, the roadmap. Yeah, I, I kind of. Yeah, I think I figured it out. Okay, there was two detours that nobody told you about. Okay. <laughs> Don't you love those? Okay, I think I can actually send it right away here. Is this it? Yep, excellent. Download it. Over here. Apply all. 
Here is Kieran Tourish Good Edition. Okay, there we go. Wonders of modern technology. Everyone should now have that better edition of Kieran Torres from Jerry's second edition. I think it's the second edition of his book. Yeah, okay. Now, so keep practicing that one, guys. But above all, I want you to familiarize yourself with it this week. Just get that tune ringing around your head, whether it's me playing it on the YouTube or Altan on the YouTube. All of these recordings can be found on YouTube like it, you can find everybody playing uh, from their records there it's just seems to be that it's just posted everywhere so familiarize yourself with Kieran Torres and we'll see how fast we can get it there next time all right now broken pledge let's do it so I'm going to call up the music that we were working with there last time that I sent out last minute Okay, let's see here. So this is No, this is still the screwed up one. Where is it? Here it is. There's the one, yeah. So this is the session.org. It's a very, it's a pretty basic version. And like Darwin was saying, he noticed a bunch of little ornamental things that I'm doing on it. <laughs> and I'll, I could talk more about them too, because it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, but this, this session version will definitely work. So we'll work with that for now. Okay, so let's do it. Ahead dead slow. And everybody has that version, right? I saw there that I sent it to everybody. So that's the session.org version of the Broken Pledge, okay? And we'll just go ahead dead slow here and see if we can practice it and then we'll learn uh, Feral O'Gara, okay? Okay, get yourself in a D minor frame of mind. One, two, three.
Okay, just take a breather. Check in with everybody. How's that feeling there in the D minor world? Everybody getting along okay? Oh, really good. Really good. I'll check with page two. Hi, page two. Everybody getting along okay with the, uh, the D minor tune? Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay, so let's take the grinder to it then. And we'll do it. We'll do it a good few hundred times there to start getting it sharpened up. Carl, how are you doing with this brand new tune for you? Have you got the right music and everything? No? Okay, I'm going to send you this now. So you might not have been on that list that I just sent out just a second ago here. Okay, forward. Carl. Yeah, okay, there you go. Okay, you should have it there now, Carl. I just sent you an email with an attachment with the correct version that we're using of the Broken Pledge. Okay. Okay, so let's go again. And we'll do it a good few times until it's absolutely... Oh, no, did I send you the wrong one? I think... No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so we'll start at that same speed, and the second time, going to push it a tiny bit. Here we go. One, two, three.
love that tune. Especially when it starts to get a little faster. Okay, how's everybody feeling about that? Anybody running into big major hitches when we went to, went faster there? A lot better once I had the right music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Carl, hey, Dan? your bow Did is you moving. That What's that? Did you record that version instead of the ones with the ornaments? Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Actually, I can do it. I can do it here tonight when we try it again. I'll make another, another quick time recording of it. Good, thank you. No problem, no problem. I would like to, to try to get some ornaments sometime though. There's some nice ones in that tune that you can do. That's a, that is a lot of fun, but definitely I will do that. Okay, now, everybody ready for, oh, I was gonna say, Carl, your bow was moving the whole time. I love the effort. That's good, man, right on. Keep that bow moving. Somebody, can can yep. you post the music in the chat there? Oh, sure. Absolute mom. So where do I do that file? Your computer. Oh, look at that. Wow. Now today, the Broken Pledge Session PDF. Yes. There it is. Okay, I have posted it in the chat. Okay, I'll start at that last speed, which is fair. And, uh, and the second time, we'll go do a little bit faster. I think it'd be great. Everybody's feeling good? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Could see anyway and that was good a good clip 
How's everybody feeling? You're bound to have had a few staggers at that clip, but how are you feeling overall? It's workable? Okay, we'll keep at it then, okay? So now, if there's no questions or comments or concerns, oh, guitar players, how did you like your chords? Is it working good? Yeah, good. If it works for you, I, it's probably gonna work for I me. Just play, I just played Doreen's chords, they're, they're, they're fine. Yeah, they're, they're the, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. She, I'm, I'm her best friend, her newest best friend now. <laughs> no, they're, they are really good. It's a really good plan, it's a basic plan, and that's always the best plan, you know? I find simple is better. Alrighty. If there's no other questions or comments, we will move on to the great Farrell O'Gara. I learned this tune, yes. Oh, this is Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Uh, can you play part B, uh, measure four again? Part B, measure four. One, two, yeah. three, four. Oh yeah, I do a roll, eh? That's one of those, uh, one of those tied rolls that I, mentioned a, a couple of weeks back there is it now if you don't do a roll you could just do exactly how it's written or you can do a cut okay or you can do the roll and it would be an up bow roll the e you would play exactly the way it's written there what's that Exactly the way it's written there. Yep, the, the fourth. No, no, nothing, just these. Sure. Ones. So that Four would sound nine. like yeah. this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. you can do those other couple of things. But okay. if you want to just play exact melody, I love that. That's great. Okay. Thank <laughs> so you. you go ahead and do that. Thanks very much. No problem, no problem. Anybody else? All good questions. Really, really good. Okay, good. So the great Farrell O'Gara, uh, yeah, I learned it here in Toronto and I was really glad I learned it. I learned it early on at Dora Keogh's. It was flying around the room and I got it early and I was glad I did because I went on a tour not long after that over in England and then ended off down in the States. And I'm gonna tell you, I must have played that tune like a dozen times on that tour just from the different people we were running into. So a very good one to have under your belt. Uh, I'm gonna play it for you a couple of times just to get it ringing around your head. I'm gonna just loosely look at the music that I sent you. Oh, where's that at now? I, I don't think I got that music. When was that sent out? Uh, that was uh, earlier today. Oh, I don't think I got it. Okay. Oh, it's in my junk folder or something. Well, it could very well be. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Uh, Feral. Where's Feral? Oh. But I just found it on session.org. So is it the same one? Well, I'll, yeah. The, it, well, it's not. Uh, there's a whole bunch of versions there on the session.org. But I'll just send this one to you right now, Bill. Okay, it's thanks. the best, best way. Bill Mercer. I don't know why you got oh. left off the list. Oh, you're a Kajiko. Sometimes Kajiko people, they don't go through. Uh, yeah. Feral. It's up in chat, too. Oh, yeah, I'll put it in chat. Oh, somebody put it in chat already? Yeah. Oh, great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's play it exactly as written. And then uh, just to get it ringing around in your head. So everybody listen up and watch my bow.
Everybody got that now? <laughs> and uh, it is a very buildable tune. That's what, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so popular. The way the the uh, guy that I love his version so much is a, a fella called Joe Doreen from Boston. He's gone now. Just a, a couple of years ago, he uh, he passed on. But he's a, a a button accordion player from Boston, uh, very well known. And they call him the King of the Triplets. And he played this tune. Like the, here was the ending. <laughs> his ending just a big hail of triplets coming down the scale there really really cool stuff but anyway but that's why I think it's so popular because it's such a buildable tune okay now let's take a look at it so it's in the key of D which I'm sure you've already figured out okay and the main phrase yeah. of it yes yeah, it's... could I interrupt the, yeah. the very first measure is repeated throughout the tune mm -hmm. so could you uh uh, go over the bowing of just the first measure. The first the measure. Exact point. Because it repeats all through the tune. Yeah. Now, the way that I would bow that, Peter, is I would do the first two notes on an up bow. Because I want to do a big cut on that D. Now, you can also go down up. But I like the sound of the up bow. See how I'm doing that? Okay. Now, the thing is about that. Hold on now. Sounds good. Whoever's doing that sounds excellent. Very. That's all right, Bill. Sounds great. Uh, but anyway, so the two, the the important thing is, is that you can you up bow those first two notes just for effect. You don't have to. But after the cut, after the way they have that triplet there, that is a cut. You have to do an up up. If you don't, the next cut you get to, you're going to be going the wrong way. Okay? So that phrase looks like this. See that? And it's kind of cool because the A to the D, you're slurring both of them. So it's a little easier to remember. See that? another up up there is right after that long D okay and then after that triplet see that and then you're straight up and down now the only thing is for those that are brave and would like to try it to get that up bow slur to start the phrase again you're gonna have to join it up with the D in the phrase before so it would look like this which is a very common move in Irish. The big up bow starting on the and. That note there, that D, that's the and of four. One and two and three and four and. And I call it the surprise up, the big Irish up, okay? So you might want to give that a try. This would certainly be a really good opportunity to try that. So What are you talking about, Dan? I'm talking about when you finish the first line, and you're about to play the very first phrase of the tune again. You see that? What? Yeah. And so to bow it the same way, you would want to hook that D into your big up bow. So, so you're not playing the B. The, the B. Uh, which B? The one that comes right before the D? In the first, in the first ending. Uh, well, the, the ending. No, no, I mean, I'm talking about uh, the middle of the A part. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Right. You see, you see where the first phrase comes back again. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I'm with you. Yeah, That's okay. what I'm talking about. But you make okay. a very good point. You would do a very a very similar move there to finish the, the first ending and go back into the to the A part again. You would do the same move. You would hook that B into your up bow that time. See that? So that's a good point. So there's a few up ups that would be very important. And of course, in the second part, Every time you do that cut, which you can see you have to do it three times, you're going to do an up, up, up right afterwards. So it looks like this. this is, sorry, I screwed that up with my knee. <laughs> see that? That's how that works there. Okay? And you got to do that every time as well. Okay? And that's about it.
And then you can do a big roll on the A if you can. And then you can do that move again. So. To finish off. Good question, Peter. Getting the bowing right away. That's nice if you can. <laughs> if you can. Okay, any other bits or pieces people want to talk about with the, with the feral? Dan, instead of the, the uh, stutter or the cut, could you roll that? Uh, on, the, on the high D? Uh, on the low. You can't roll on an open string, unfortunately. Oh, well, 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 yeah, you're right. As much as we would love to, Leslie. So what we do instead, if you want to do it, is the fake roll, where you try to try to imitate the flute player and go yeah. but I wouldn't and, I would just do a cut and so you're doing fourth finger rolls in the B part then absolutely that is where you could do a roll that'd be nice okay. and I also I replace I do it twice I play that instead of what's written there I usually just do another roll <laughs> So if you I want like it, your way. yeah, I me like too. Your way. <laughs> Let's work. <laughs> okay, so there's those few tricks there, and then like I said, the last line you can do a great big roll on that A. It'd be lovely. Anybody that wants to try doing that, and that would be what they call the down bow ornamental roll. You space it out, you leave it a little longer, so everybody can hear the lovely ornament you're putting on it. Yes, Debbie. Well, at the end of the second second bar, like yep. the second time, it ends on a D, and then you go up into, I'm assuming you would still do the up bows, although, uh, because it goes into a triplet again, so you do the up bows again, but yep. because that D, it's like a pickup, isn't it? Would you still... Now, exactly where are you talking about? Second line, second part of oh, A. Oh, second part, okay, yeah. At the end, there's a D. Yeah. And then you move into your E and C, and I assume you do two up bows there, but do you use that as a pickup and skip it, or do you include that little D? So you're talking about the second part, second line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see the little the D that's sticking there? That there, you mean? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, I just, I just straight bowed that. Okay. Yeah, just straight upy downy. It's a weird way they got that, eh? Why well, I don't know why they would do that. It's probably because the notes are so low. You know, there's a rule about stems, right? If more than half of the notes on the group of four are below the uh, middle line, then they're all supposed to go down. You know what I mean? Or the other way around. It's a little. It's a weird way they have it there. It looks weird. I just thought it just was looking almost like a pickup and then I figured the next two you'd go into up bows again. Well, no, it is a pickup, definitely. It's a pickup for the next phrase, right? But you want to do, I'm going to be doing a roll on that, so I'm going to do the pickup. The E is going to be in an up bow, the F is going to be a down, and then a great big up roll for the D. Oh, I see. That's how I do that. Good okay. question though, very good question. And that occurs every time, everybody. Every time you see that lick with the F to the D, there's an E before it, which is going to be that pickup that Debbie's talking about. Okay, good question. Anything else? What good questions, guys? Geez, we don't even have to play it. We know it's so good now. My God. Everybody good? Check page two. Anybody have any questions or comments over here on page two? No, nope. uh, you'll be happy to know that my new computer is being shipped, brand new Mac Mini with the brand new chip, and so there will be no more page two. <laughs> it's kind of kind of sad, actually. You guys probably had a little hangout thing happening. Anyway, so let's see if we can tuck into the A part of this tune there, guys. Okay, so we got this first phrase. I'm going to play it nice and slow so you can hear it, and then we're going to try it. So we got the A to the D, and I do it in an up, like I said. Cut, another up, arpeggiate, and then we got this little move. 
Okay? And then we got the second phrase. Let's get the opening phrase, the first two bars. Let us do just the first two bars, okay? So we're starting with the big up. One, two, three, go. Let's do it again, right away. Get your up ready. Ready, go. Okay, one more go. Ready, and. Okay, good. Now let's take a look at this second phrase. So this is a little more fancy bowing. Down, up, up, diggity, up, up. And the rest is straight bowing. Except you're going to go at the end. See that? So why don't we do, we'll do this middle phrase, but we're going to include that A to the D. Okay, we're just that, just that big up bow at the end. So we'll start with the long high D. Ready, D. C, A, diggity. A, F. Here we go. Hey, that did not look too bad, you know? The bows that I could see, we're making a stab at it. Very good. Let's do it again. So the long D on the down. Ready? And. Not bad, not bad. Last time, I swear. Ready? And... to repeat okay so how are we feeling everybody okay with all that it's basically just two phrases right okay good I'll check page two page two everybody feeling good all right let's get our helmets on and go right from one end to the other there guys and girls <laughs> Three, 
right. How did we do? Anybody couldn't do it? Anybody have real trouble? Couldn't get through it? Didn't look like it. All the boats were moving nice. Everybody doing okay on page one? Okay, well, if there's no more problems, let's grind away at it. So we'll pick up the speed just the tiniest bit and we'll play it, I don't know, 500 times, something like that. Okay, Debbie can keep count. She's the business major. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, go! <laughs> second part shall we now let's see so we got this phrase you can see it's very repetitive that's the first phrase second phrase guess what comes next this ending which I love. That ending, that's like a scale with a bunch of jogs in it where you got to jog back a note. You know what I mean? That's what that is and I just love that. So and then when the only thing different in the whole second part is this great big long second ending and I'm sure some of you are wondering why they wrote out the whole second part with no repeat and that's why because the second ending is four bars long okay it's the whole last line they often do that with tunes rather than made all these repeat signs with a great big long second ending they just write out the whole thing from one end to the other I think it's great because it's a lot easier to follow than say Jerry's book <laughs> The Karen Tarsh. Anyway, so let's see if we can get the two phrases that this part is mostly made of, and then we'll get the ending, and then we'll have the whole feral. Okay? So the first phrase of the second part's got this up roll, or you just play exactly what you see on the paper there. So I'll, I'll play with the roll. And then we got. 
then it scale and then scale up and we do the next phrase okay so let's see how we can get through that F to the D okay ready and F D G D F D G there we go B up we go Okay, that looked like it went okay. Let's do that a few more times. One, two, three, and. Okay, that says do it one more time, I'd say. One, two, three, and. Now this next phrase is very simple. We've got a little double note there. You can do your double note grace note if you want. You know, it is an Irish move. And then we just go up the scale. A little arpeggiated bit. Okay, so let's try that second phrase. Ready and three. Up we go, F to D, G, down we go, do it again, ready, go. Last time. Okay, now what comes next is the first phrase again, exactly the same, exactly. The second phrase, however, is a little different. It keeps going down. Okay, so let's get that. This is going to be, we're starting now, the fourth line down of the tune, and it's the third bar in. Okay, we're going to start there. I'm going to play it for you. D, down we go. Jog, jog again. Okay, let's try that phrase there. Okay, so B to the D, or sorry, D to the B. Ready, and. B, down we go. G, G. Oh, that looked good, that looked good. Let's do it again like that. Ready, and. B, down. G, G again. Okay, now, so far we have gotten the first phrase, the second phrase, the second phrase with the slight modification. Now, technically and by rights, if we get this ending, then we got the whole tune sculpt, as my dad used to say. I don't really know what that means, but... So why don't we get that lad, the very, very last bit, which is the great big long second ending. So I'm going to play it for you. I like to do a great big roll on that A. Forget about that C, D, B at the end. I just really play a great big long D. Okay? Is this the end of the tune? That's meant to go back into it again, but I, I might have a different way to get back into it again. So let's get this ending, guys. We start with the great big A roll, or just a long A that is in tune with a nice sound, and we'll move on from there. Ready, long A. B, up we go. B, down we go. And luckily we all 
already know some of that from the A part, right? So let's do that again. Great big long A with a roll on it or just a nice one. Ready? And. second bar of this last line, I call that the hardest bit of the tune because it is not repeated anywhere. It's the lone phrase that is not repeated. So when I learned it, that was the last one to come in, that phrase. Especially since I've heard a whole bunch of people doing different ideas about that phrase, like Joe Durain, for instance, with all of his triplets. Okay, so I find that bar hard. Let's do that ending once more. Yes. Pam. Yeah. Uh, on the, the last line on that high A where you're doing the roll. Yeah. Are you doing, um, are you connecting the F sharp afterwards in the same bow? Let me or see. Or do you do a new bow? No, new bow. New bow? Okay. New bow. Thank you. And it's only a little one, eh? Like one. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. That's hard to perceive for sure. Seamless, I couldn't tell. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, no problem. So, yeah, good question. Good question. So, let's do that. Yes? Dan, sorry. Um, sorry. I was trying to look for the chords on some of those tunes. I think I found them all. Oh, good. So I've got them all there on chat. There, I just scanned them. I didn't know how to do anything else. But uh, what tune are we playing right now? Sorry. I got Feral. Lost. I lost. We are playing Feral. Yeah. Okay. Feral O'Gara. Yeah, the, the chords for that are up there. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, let me just take a look at them here. How come it's not opening? Ugh, I can't wait to get my new computer. This one is great. I inherited it from my mom, but it's getting slow and it doesn't run half of the things. Okay, I can't open that there, Grant, but I trust you, man. I'm sure they're good chords. Okay, let's. No, yeah. Session, so they should be. Oh, they should be okay. Yeah. So okay, they're let's do that. Uh, yes. Sorry. They're good, Grant. They're good. Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. Okay, so let's get this last line one more time, guys. Look at that. My fiddle went again. Springtime, I tell you, it's good and it's bad. Okay, long roll. Ready and. time with an in tune fiddle. Ready and take the whole B part guys let's start at the top of the B part and do not stop until there's none of the enemy left one two three go
Well, everybody looks pretty happy. No, not, not many discouraged faces. Let's do one more time, exactly like that. Ready, and... seem to have made it. <laughs> that was a lot of playing there. Ended up being a lot of playing. Okay, how's everybody feeling about Feral O'Gara? Do you think you got the bones under your fingers now and you can stitch them together to a to a uh, semblance of a tune there? Or your idea of it, which is more important. Great. Any questions or problems at all? No? Yeah. Yep. Hi, Susan. Um, the first note and the last line, how long are you holding that? Let me see here. The dotted. Uh, it's a dotted quarter note, so like, kind of like, yum diddle dee dee so one, two, three, dee 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 like that. Okay. Okay, one extra. 
And if, and if that's awkward, lots of people find that awkward, you can just play a quarter note A and then an eighth note A and get on with the rest of the melody, okay? If you need a cheater, that's no problem at all to do that. Okay, good question. Anybody else got any bits or pieces they need me to clarify? Or just want to complain at me about something, which is totally okay too? Okay, cool. So we're on for next week. It's St. Patrick's Day. Wear something green. We'll play all of our Irish stuff. It'll be fun. And I should tell you that the day before St. Patrick's Day is my birthday. Okay, I'm going to be 45. Yes, indeed. I, I had the I had the uh, uh, the fort the great fortune to be born the day before St. Patrick's Day. So every year on my birthday, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> But luckily, I like my work. Anyway, so on my birthday, everybody seems to be doing live streams on St. Patrick's Day, including Natalie and everybody and their dog. So I've decided to do my live stream on my birthday, on the on the 16th, okay? I'm going to put out a poster about it, but it'll be at, uh, uh, let me see, no, it's at six, uh, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock I'll start because i got to teach the beginner class, which is great, by the way. Anybody that wants to bone up on their basics, I have about 15 or 16 people in that beginner class, and we are taking it right back to basics. And we're getting along really good with intonation and sound. But anyway, so they're going to come earlier so that I can do my live stream at 8. And I'm going to have my buddy Ross is going to join me in the shed with the Ethernet music. So you have pipes and fiddle next Tuesday. All right? Anyway, yep. thanks, thanks a million, everybody, and we'll see you on... Wednesday for sure. Okay? Yeah, we're we're in 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 okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.